Coming up on Take 30 News, text reveal Brett Favre okay. sold millions in a Mississippi welfare scheme. Louisiana School donates water to the Jackson, Mississippi area amid the city's water crisis. The music headliner for Bulldog Bash has been announced ahead of the upcoming event next month. Your Take 30 News starts right now. And show up. And ready camera two. Take two. Hi everyone and welcome to your Take 30 Graphic. News. I'm Heather Harrison. Graphic. And I'm Molly Keeley. Take one. Newly released text messages allegedly show Feedback former Mississippi update. Governor Phil Bryant Ready worked clip. to help NFL Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre obtain welfare funds to build a volleyball facility at the University of Southern Mississippi. Ross Adams has the story. Take package. This is the University of um, Southern Mississippi Volleyball yep. Stadium that $5 million dollars in welfare funds were used to build. Newly released text messages show uh, how ready, former Governor, Governor Phil yep, Governor, Bryant pulled one of the key figures now implicated in the massive welfare fraud scheme to push the proposal to get the dollars ready, to Favre. build that stadium for Brett Favre, where the NFL ready, Hall Brett of Famer's daughter reportedly played the sport. According to a text message from July 2019, Talk Governor to Bryant time. told Nancy New, just left Brett Favre. Can we Minute help 30. him with his project? We should meet soon to see how I can make sure we keep your projects on course. New replied, I would really appreciate having the opportunity to follow through with all the good things we're working on, especially projects like Brett's. An attorney representing News nonprofit Mississippi Community Education Center released the new text messages Monday asking for the former governor's communications on Coming the volleyball project as part of a civil lawsuit filed in the $77 million criminal welfare fraud scheme. New is now assisting prosecutors as part of her plea uh, deal. About a minute in left. July, New alleged Bryant directed her to pay Favre more than $2 million to make speeches. Favre asked New in August 2018, if we were to pay me, is there any way the media could find out where it came from and how much? New replied, no, we have never had that information publicized. I understand you may be uneasy about that, though. Let's see what happens on Monday with the conversation with some of the folks at Southern. Maybe it will 35. click with them, hopefully. Favre was growing impatient that USM was moving too slowly on the project. In August 2018, new text at Favre, wow, just got off the phone with Phil Bryant. He is on board with us. We will get this done. Favre responded, awesome. I needed to hear that for sure. According to the state auditor, Bryant 15. was the whistleblower in the welfare scandal, and Ready the former two. governor has denied news accusations that he told her to give far millions of dollars. Take two. According to the Mississippi auditor, it could be the largest public fraud scheme in the state's Ready history. Weather. Let's hand it over to Zach with a look at uh, our weather. Two, yep, yep. Pull, go weather. Clear skies dominating the Good area this there. afternoon, that really graphic, keeping awesome. those Full temperatures graphic. up. Right now, most of us are sitting in the mid 80s After with those dew points two, sitting water, in just water. the mid 60s, keeping the temperatures warm, but Keep not like clothes sticking to your what skin warm, like which is really good, yeah. especially He's considering this time of year. So but that's all due to a much yeah. larger system in play. I'll have more on that. I'll have more on that coming up later in your full forecast. Back to you. Uh, take two. Thank you, Zach. And what do you do when you have more Ready than package. enough? In the case of Witten Middle School, the answer is simple to share. Rosalind Anderson tells us their gift is being shared with the community. And take package. Water, 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 go get some water. Yep. We definitely want to be a blessing to others because it's definitely a blessing to our students and our staff here. Witten Middle School principal Paula Epps is talking about the two, gift so of seven there. pallets of bottled water donated by the men of Focus in Action of Jenna, Louisiana. The organization heard Witten teacher and Jackson Association of Educators President George Stewart speak on the water crisis on NBC Nightly News. And we decided to contact our parents of our students here and do a giveaway for water here. So we've had our staff on board as well as our students coming out and just providing, you know, that blessing to, to the community as well. Students and staff set up the extra cases on the front lawn and began flagging down passing motorists. My sister brought me some cases of gallon water, so I've been using that, but other than that, we have to boil. Uh, it's a bad situation, 45. but I just believe they're going to come to an end. I think everything is going to be all Coming right. Back on Kimberly two, Jackson is Witten's attendance clerk and parent center yep. coordinator. And she Jackson. also lives in the neighborhood. At any time we have water, low water pressure at home, I know the school don't have any water pressure at all. To be able to actually live in this area and know what the parents are going through, uh, yep, I, we just felt compelled to just reach out to our parents to, because we, I, we live in the uh, area, yeah. so we know the struggle. The school kept three of the seven seconds. donated pallets of water for the 350 15. students and staff. 
I just was smiling because it was my nephew with the food. I said, well, at least, at least okay. the schools be doing things for people. Thank y'all, Louisiana. In Jackson, Rosalind Anderson, three on your side. The Jackson area has been faced with adversity lately, but this is Stay a ray of you. light for the community. And Bulldog Bash is Ready, only Bulldog a month Bash away, package. Bulldogs. This week, they announced who will be headlining the event. Reporter Jenny Huff was there for the big reveal. Check package. Many Bulldog students nice. gathered this past Wednesday at noon between the Union and the YMCA building for the grand reveal of the performers coming to Bulldog Bash next month. When the banners dropped, it was Surfaces and Bryce Vine. Advisor Kylie Forrester tells us why this event takes place each year. We don't have to do this, but we think it's really fun. It gets everybody excited. Um, we like to do it a, about a month before the actual event just to give people something to look forward to and something to get excited about. The Headliner Surfaces featuring Bryce Wayne was just announced here at the YMCA building. But many students walk up this very road to get to the concert that will take place on Main Street October 21st. While the students were very excited about the reveal, the process of getting to this reveal has been a lot of time and dedication for the Student Bulldog Bash Committee over the last few months. Um, so we put out a survey every year for Bulldog Bash that we ask the students for feedback, um, ask them what they're interested in seeing, what artists they're interested in seeing. Uh, we get a lot of comments on um, artists, but we try to take all of that feedback and then we make a big list of people that we think would be a good fit for Bulldog Bash and then we work with an agent who comes back and tells us the prices on the artists and if they're available and then we kind of go back and forth until we find the right fit. For Take 30 News, I'm Jenny Huff. Take two. Mark your calendars, Bulldog Bash will be on October 21st on Main Street. And after the break, we'll take a look at a nice. new monument Bulldog celebrating a past Bulldog. hero and check in with the Boys and Girls Club. Go commercial. Nice, great job. Uh, Lolly needs to get the mic. be part of one of the top engineering schools in the nation without ever leaving the coast. seconds left. Well, now you can. Mississippi State's collaboration with Mississippi yep, Gulf Coast Community College Tight. allows you to earn core credits while pursuing a four-year degree in mechanical or electrical engineering all in the same location. And with classes taught by MSU professors, the world-renowned education you couldn't find anywhere Five else seconds. is Camera now two. in your own backyard. To learn more about this great opportunity, Take visit two. us online. Welcome back to Take 30 Hold News. Three. The Boys and Girls Club of Startville of the Golden there Triangle, go. which is good. compromised of Startville, Columbus, and West Point units, is ranking up this fall with several of the events of the community to look forward to. Take three. That's right. Leaders of the Hold Golden Triangle nice. Boys and Hold Girls graphic. Club are calling this their comeback year Ready, regarding package. the ample amount of events they have planned. I spoke with the people in charge about how things they have planned for this fall. Take package. The Boys and Girls Club of the Golden Triangle are kicking off the school year with several events coming up in October. The West Point unit has a Bruise and Blues event on October 27th, and the Starkville unit has a golf tournament coming up. We have our annual golf tournament coming up on the 20th year. So we're looking forward to doing that and looking forward to um, the community partners supporting that event. Yep, it is October 7th at Lions Hill. We still have some team away. spots and uh, several uh, sponsorship spots that are available. This event will be at the Lions Hill Center and Golf Course at East Mississippi Community College. Our unit here in Starkville also has other events they host annually, including the Bleeding Blues Awards. What the Bleeding Blue Award is, it's an award event that we celebrate our sponsors, our volunteers, our parents, and our youth. These students that have been with the Boys and Girls Club are on their way with post-secondary plans. And so that's kind of just a time. pivotal event that we have that highlights what our kids can do. 35 seconds. The Golden Triangle Boys and Girls Club There's has Olivia. made their yep. mission statement very clear. The mission is to enable all young people, especially on those who need us the most, to reach we their full potential as two. productive yes. care like seconds, right? 15? Members of the community can volunteer online 20. at www.bgcgoldentri.org. 
Volunteers can help lend a hand at events in the facilities or as tutors and mentors in the classroom. This is Olivia Beck with Take 30 News. Take two. Wow, it sounds like the local Boys and Girls Club has big plans for this Ready school one year. With Heather. Take one. A statue honoring Harriet Tubman was unveiled in Maryland on Thursday. The 13 foot tall beacon of hope Ready now stands statue. proud at the Circuit Court House Ready in Cambridge. Package. Lauren Miller has more. Check package. A momentous, inspiring, and historical day for the city of Cambridge. Unveiled was the Beacon of Hope, a 13-foot statue of Harriet Tubman and her legacy. Sculptor Wesley Pretty Wofford Wesley says Wofford. the grounds have been transformed. This sacred space has now been transformed from the ugly history that took place here. Next we learned that this exact governor. spot was where Tubman's niece was on auction as a slave. Leaders hope this inspires everyone. The beacon of hope is something Beacon's that the hopefully will inspire Let's not just the current graphic. generation but future generations as well. What, what I saw today was One unity, atonement, and looking forward to tomorrow. Today's event incorporated dancers, singers, relatives of Harry Tubman, and those Ready who made Adrian. this day happen. This is 200 years worth of emotion. To see the mixed audience with the mixed emotion is exactly what we wanted. At the bottom of the statue is a younger Harry Tubman. One of the models was chosen for a reason. She is the seventh generation great niece of Tubman. I never really thought of what it's going to be like. Like having my face and having everybody just looking at my face, it's just a incredible experience. Those with the project say they want the hope that Harriet had to give those today that hope. What did Harriet hope for? A spiritual and uplifting day to unify those in the community. Take two. The statue stands as a constant reminder of how far we have come and how far we can still go. And after the break, Zach Rogers gives us a look into this week's nice weather. Pull that. Go commercial. Performance okay, at the, the highest sure level is the objective of every athlete. But what can athletes accomplish if they understood and responded to everything their bodies are telling them? Mississippi State University's Athlete Engineering Program is designing and deploying groundbreaking advanced wearable technology that creatively collects millions of data points for researchers to analyze, predict performance, and improve body mechanics. Researchers in engineering, kinesiology, sociology, textiles, and more disciplines are working together to test and design new technology that leads to winning results. In addition to helping athletes reach their highest potential, this collaborative program is reducing injuries and protecting the health of competitors now and far into the future. Mississippi State University. Farming can be a tough way to make a living. Weather, pricing pressures, and unpredictable swings in demand can take a toll, not only on farmers' finances, but on their mental health as well as that of family members and farm hey, for he asked for a 30, That's why Mississippi State yep, University that, is spearheading a program one, to train yeah, extension agents yeah, to detect the signs of depression, substance abuse, and other stress-related challenges. Everyone has a seconds. bad day, of course, but this holistic view of a farmer's circumstances enables MSU representatives to recognize the difference between routine struggles and deeper, more serious issues. It may be a tough conversation, but the sooner it gets started, the sooner farmers can get help to better manage stress and continue the important work of growing the products our Ready world weather. needs. Caring for farms and farmers. Mississippi State University. Go weather. Taking a look right now outside at our campus cam, right, looking at right back at Hillman Hall, you can see clear skies. Well, kind of clear. I mean, we've got some clouds here and nice there, graphic. but that is a view I will that. never get tired of. I'm Campus Connect meteorologist Zachary Rogers here with your forecast. Right now, we're sitting at about 86. Feels like 88 with winds from the southeast at five miles an hour. Most of us are seeing sunny skies and the radars back that up. No rain or clouds to speak of, except for those few scattered clouds we're seeing outside, mainly just here and there, but that's mainly because those are convective clouds. They're not really bringing any rain with them. Over the twin states, you can see most of us are sitting in those mid to upper 80s and those dew points are staying in the mid 60s, which is keeping that weather 
nice and warm, but not to the point where your clothes are sticking to you, which is good for, which is good for the occasion, but for this time of year, it is quite, ex it is quite rare that we should get this hot, and that's because He's of all this dry air left. that has moved into our area as of yet. And that's because of this, of this high pressure that has settled in over the southeast as of now mo with that front that came through last week mostly off the Atlantic seaboard and a stalled front off to our south. We are seeing that high pressure just sitting over us, bringing with it a lot of dry, sunny conditions, which is very great for this weekend. As for tonight, low of 61, a cool evening with clear skies, calm winds, perfect for whatever you may have on the docket for this evening. I know Friday nights, a lot of people like to go out. It'll be a perfect night for that. As for your weekend, Saturday, clear and sunny at 88 degrees. Sunday, we will be seeing ourselves come back up into the 90s, and it will also be very sunny as well. We will see a very sunny weekend, but we will be heating up to temperatures above average coming into next week. As for the next seven days, She's Saturday and Sunday, left. we're seeing ourselves in the we're seeing ourselves in the 80s. But as we come into Monday, we are going to be breaching into the 90s again, yeah, heating up above average temperatures for that time. But our lows will be sticking in the our lows will be sticking in the mid 60s as of. Saturday and Sunday, but as we come into Monday, and those highs climb into the upper into the mid to upper 90s. We're saying 94, 95. That is eight degrees okay. above average for this time of year, with the average being about um, 86 degrees time. for this time uh, of year. We're seeing going. our lows come up to 70 degrees and stay that way as we move through stop, the latter half of next. As we move through the latter half of next week, we're seeing those temperatures drop back down as we move into Thursday and Friday but those lows will be staying in the 70s with some clouds returning. However, that, however, that dry, sunny conditions will stay for the remainder yeah. of this week and into next week. And take two. Thank you for that update, Zach. Coming up, Jaquez has a conversation with Mississippi uh, State football's Dylan Johnson no and checks in with SEC football. Take Meeting the challenges of a changing okay, world. Back in sports. It's this a responsibility a we take seriously. Mississippi State University. How long is this commercial? Today, two our outstanding two faculty are on the job with a passion that right places them among sure the best already. in the business. We're launching new classroom models, uh, investing That's in world-changing research, and providing a college experience that's Cambridge, second Cambridge to none. Three, if you get a chance. Though things may look different, on it right now. our okay. sites have you never been it. higher. To be or not to be? That is the question that echoes the walls of the theater department um, at Mississippi probably, State University. You could pan a little right. I Nurturing the voice and movement of a hey, new Jonathan, generation fine. of dynamic storytellers. An inclusive program welcoming all to a broad course of study yeah, in directing, stagecraft, playwriting, uh, and acting. Right. Discover your passion right. in performance right. and production with MSU yeah. Theater. Good. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. 30 seconds. Print. 30 seconds. It opens the doors to the world of communication. It's where a student can be anything. It teaches teamwork, diligence, loyalty, and responsibility. At Mississippi State, we are dedicated to further the field of journalism. We make sure to tell the story no matter how challenging. We incorporate all aspects to help you grow as a student uh, and as a person. Three. So, what are you waiting for? Take three. Jacquez Welcome back to Third News. I'm Jaquez Terrell. Mississippi State has won the last two games and is planning Ready on winning the next one. Take me up. The game plan the Bulldogs have implanted has been showing up exactly how they will like it every Saturday and is hoping to come out on top against the first SEC game this season. Last season, Mississippi State lost to LSU 28-25, but their plan this season is to implant a good game plan and come out on top. I talked with Dylan, Jill, Dylan Johnson, the starting running back for the Bulldogs, and he talked a lot about being consistent and being different. And since he's rolling to his third season, he's ready to talk. Go it's, it's totally different when you, you're playing, you know, you okay. go from Pac-12 to uh, the SEC. The, the speed of the game is a lot different. Guys are a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot faster. Three, he, he uh, you know, we do the same thing, man. We go out there, we um, practice hard, we execute plays, we run the plays that, you know, we're going we're gonna to run out there on the on field. And, you know, everybody just locked in, you know, this, I think that's the main thing. I think this, this week we've been really locked in, you know, 
on dialed in on with each other, staying on the same page. Cause we're going into an environment that's gonna be loud, you know, really loud. Probably one of the loudest stadiums in the country. One, well, if not the loudest stadium in the cl- country, you know what I mean? So, no, man, I, we, I'm excited, man. Uh, I'm excited about what we we can do and what we will do. Take, uh, yep. The number one team in the country, the yep. Bulldogs, is headed to South Carolina this weekend to play SEC play. This is a rival weekend for these two teams. Whenever the game nice. costs and the Georgia Bulldogs go head to head, ranking doesn't matter. It's just hard nosed football. The Georgia Bulldogs are expecting to see nothing but straight white towels down in awesome. Willie B Stadium. Kirby Smart said these kids are excited about going on the road and opening up SC play and looking forward to Ready playing stop. in the, that type of environment. Take stop. Yeah, the guys are excited. Uh, I think anytime you get an SEC road opponent, something about going on the road that you embrace that uh, environment. And you know, most of our kids uh, love going to play in the SEC on the road. I know. You know last is. year, you know, Tennessee and Auburn stick out as pretty unique environments, and I think South Carolina is in, in line with that in terms of their fan base. You know, it, last year was really unique for everybody because we're coming off COVID. And none of the kids had seen an environment like that. So we had two classes of guys who had not. And uh, now, you know, most of them got to see it last year. So our, our freshman group will be the first time getting to see that kind of uh, raucous and rude bus arrival and, uh, and obviously the, the white towels. So um, it's something that uh, our kids embrace and um, we look forward to playing in that environment. Take three. Last night was a big weekend for NFL season. The Kansas City Chiefs and the L.A. Chargers faced off last night. It was the Chiefs' first home game this season, and it was the 50th University of Arrowhead Stadium, and the Arrow Chiefs got busy early and fast. In a press conference last night, Patrick Mahomes talked about the different adversity they battled during the beginning of the game, but ended up coming out on top. I think it's just the way we battled, the adversity that we kind of battled through in the beginning of the game. The defense kept us in the game. Uh, The offense stepped up when we needed to. We ran the ball when we needed to. Um, And you never know with new teams how if you're going to be able to do that. And uh, to show that this early in the season, I think we can carry that going into the rest of it. The Chiefs ended up winning 24 to 27 to 24. The Chiefs ended up winning 27 to 24 last night. The next Jimmy game is on the road in Indianapolis, September 25th. My name is Jaquez Terrell for Take 30 News. Take two. Thank you, Jaquez, for that sports update. And coming up, we'll find out how Jimmy having Matt, a furry nice. friend can that. affect your life on Ready campus. And we take time to say thank you to those who make us look our best. Take commercial. As concern grows over the declining health of the world's oceans, Veterinary students at Mississippi State are learning how to rescue and rehabilitate vulnerable marine animals. Through a unique partnership between the College of Veterinary Medicine and the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport, Mississippi, students are experiencing the chance of a lifetime. Real-time research of this fragile ecosystem prepares students for a future in providing care for sick and stranded dolphins, turtles, sea lions, and other marine species. At the same time, MSU's advanced diagnostic technology is helping innovate for solutions while improving treatment and outcomes. Not only are the waters of the Gulf Coast opening new worlds of discovery for Mississippi State veterinary students, they are much safer now thanks to this game-changing partnership that's improving life for literally hundreds of aquatic animals. Dogs are often considered man's best friend, but are they student's best friend? Our Jake Moore has the answer to this peculiar question. Take baggage. Students have plenty of responsibilities in their day-to-day lives. Balancing classes, social life, and sometimes a job can be a lot. But is it worth it to add a dog into the equation? Reed Crosby, a senior chemical engineering major and owner of two dogs, thinks it is. It's two smiling faces when you come back home. One that's really loud, the other one's really timid, but it's kind of just two people waiting on you. To hang out whenever you get back from a stressful day. In addition to companionship, these furry friends have Ready various emotional it. benefits for students. According to a survey it. done of over 360 students at four major universities, an overwhelming amount the of them said dogs okay. were helpful okay. for their stress we levels and mental health. Jody Sandberg, a junior biochemistry major, Tom. believes her dog is a key part of keeping her spirits bright. 
Because even though she can't help me with my math homework Jenny or like my chemistry homework, she can yep. sit there job, and just job. be a little companion um, that'll, okay, so you know, ease uh, my anxiety and two, definitely calm me yep. down when needed most. We're cutting the Whitney Houston graphic. Unfortunately, we're it's not all positive. The the Only the dog does have its downsides. The time commitment and financial burden can be too much for some students. Many dogs also shed a lot of hair and make messes, potentially costing their owner more time and money. Deciding whether or not to own a dog is something a student and their roommates should decide for themselves. But if you're looking for a loyal companion with mental health benefits, then a dog may be right for you. For Take 30 News, I'm Jake Moore. Take two. If you're considering adopting and a dog, visit one. the Octobaha County Humane Society or your local shelter. Take one. It's the second full week of September, which means it's National Beauty and Barber okay. Week. This is Sorry, a seven day celebration, shows appreciation for those who help others feel beautiful. We got the scoop on what goes in on the lives of a cosmetologist. Ready, uh, this package? Yep, take package. Imagine your big day is finally there, here. Okay. Your nails are done and your hair is perfect. Um, National Beauty and Barber Week, the second full week of September, two. is the opportunity to thank those professionals who made it all happen. And these people deserve to be celebrated. I mean, after this. They fill a lot of roles. And you wouldn't trust just anyone to do your hair, right? I mean, would you trust me? Over Didn't a think so. Abigail Robertson of Allure Salon says that being a hairstylist is more than just cuts and color. I'd say building relationships with clients After is sop, like having someone come in night, as right? a stranger yep. and okay. then they become After family. The sop, you learn a lot about your client. You're like a therapist to them as well. Take, take two, okay. take two. We certainly do appreciate those who keep us beautiful. Happy National Beauty and Barber Week. Now to Zach for the last look at the weather tonight. Weather, good night. We're fine, we're fine. Camera one, camera one, camera one. Well, as for next, as for the next few days, you can expect those temperatures to rise, Five, and as they do, wrap it up, wrap it up. well, Three, you can expect those temperatures to be two. much above average. Thank you for tuning in to Take 30 News tonight. We so appreciate you joining us. We'll see you again next week here on Friday at 4 o'clock. Have a good one. Good night.